Hi, I'm David Soderman. I'm one of the founders at Boho Camper Vans. I'm very excited to be involved in this year's Project Van Life Van Summit and uh, put together a presentation titled Discovering the Right Builder for Your Camper Van. A little bit about me. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin. Uh, I moved out to Arizona in 2008 for school and uh, ended up graduating from Arizona State uh, with a degree in architecture and a minor in marketing. Uh, I'm currently living in Phoenix with my fiance, Serena, and our two boys, Sol and Rocco. Uh, Sol is two and Rocco is one. Uh, I own Boho Camper Vans alongside my partner, uh, Brett Allenson. About Boho Camper Vans, uh, we're a manufacturing company that builds, rents, and sells camper vans. And we started in 2018. Uh, it started with uh, a single build, more of a let's build a van to rent to maybe make a little bit of extra beer money. Wasn't meant to be a big business, uh, but quickly turned into uh, just that. Uh, in the last six years, we've grown um, our operations. We're in a 25,000 square foot facility under, under roof here in Tempe. We've built now 300 plus uh, full camper van conversions from beginning to end. Uh, we've done 1,500 rental trips and counting. And we also do provide service to existing conversions from um, other third party builders. Uh, so we've seen, uh, we've had our hands on a lot of vans. We've seen a lot of conversions uh, and hopefully that adds some credibility to what we talk about today. This is our build shop. Uh, you know, we build about 10 to 12 vans at a time and we have a separate spot uh, in, the, in our facility for the rental space. We quickly realized woodworking and Detailing vans don't go well together, so we had a separate space that we call our showroom, which has our rental vans waiting to be picked up, uh, client vans waiting to be picked up, vans waiting to be built. So we have a big space uh, with a lot of vans. Fact about us, uh, both my partner uh, Brett and I were born on the exact same day in the exact same city, uh, June 11th, 1986 in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Uh, and what's odd is that we didn't become friends until we met up in Arizona almost 25 years later. Uh, crazy coincidence uh, that we discovered over beers one night. Uh, that's us uh, with our first van build. We affectionately named Stevie. That was our rental vehicle that we started the business with. And we look like a couple of young boys. <laughs> Fun fact number two. Uh, we pitched on Shark Tank. Uh, Boho Vans uh, actually went on Shark Tank in March of 2020. We uh, received four offers and we ended up closing a deal with Barbara Corcoran, who is a 10% owner uh, in our business. Uh, it was pretty cool. We were able to roll the van onto the set. All the sharks got inside of it. Uh, they were very excited by it. We weren't sure what to expect because it's kind of an odd business for Shark Tank, but it ended up working out really well. And perhaps you've seen the episode. If not, uh, you can probably find it on YouTube or Hulu. But another cool fact about us. All right. So now we've established who we are, uh, where we come from, what we do. Uh, let's jump into the topic, which is discovering the right builder for your camper van. In the last year or two, there's just been so many options that have come on to the scene. Uh, it seems as though there's another builder or two popping up almost every month, uh, at least in our area, I and mean, we see it nationwide. There's just so many choices, and feedback we've gotten from clients is it's overwhelming. They're not sure who to work with, um, why they should choose one builder over, or, over another, and I feel their pain. Uh, and so today, let's start with the question of how do you ensure you're choosing a reputable and trustworthy builder who will bring your vision to life? I see this question as having kind of two parts. Um, it's choosing the builder and bringing your vision to life. And so I'll start in reverse where your vision, I think, is where everything needs to start. Um, before you go external, searching, 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 I think it's good to go internal uh, and first analyze yourself uh, so you can understand your needs and preferences. Uh, this is ultimately what's going to allow you to choose the right builder that meets your vision. So how do we come up with that? Starts with understanding your needs. So we're going to jump into 
some categories and some questions I think would be useful for everyone to examine uh, about themselves before they start searching for van builders. I think it's good to run through these questions or similar questions, perhaps even write them down uh, because it will help you craft this vision, which will help you choose the right builder to meet that vision. First category is camper van usage. Questions are, how often do you plan on using your van? Are you gonna be a van lifer, a full-timer, part-timer, weekend warrior? Uh, are you gonna be more of a, I wanna buy a van to rent out like we did uh, originally at Boho? Uh, you know, what's, what's the plan of use? Uh, and where do you plan on traveling? I think that's very important too. Uh, you know, what type of climates you're traveling to, what type of roads, um, you know, how far? I think those are all important things to consider, as well as the campsites you frequent. Everybody knows about uh, designated campsites, your typical uh, RV sites with hookups and facilities, and maybe you have to pay to get in. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the freedom that a camper van can allow is you can generally camp in dispersed areas where maybe you don't have to pay and maybe there's no one around and, and that's the type of um, camping you prefer. Or maybe yourself in city and you're going to be working remotely and you need to be camping in the city so there's various types of campsites um, that you can choose from places to spend the night i think it's good to examine uh, how you how you plan on camping and then also a question most people don't think about right away is what's the plan for storing your van second category uh, deals with the size and type of van the first question we ask anyone interested in working with us is how tall are you? Uh, depending on your height, that can dictate the type of van chassis uh, we build on. So it's important to understand uh, the benefits and the, the limitations of certain chassis um, pertaining to your height. How many people will you be traveling with? Again, very important as far as layout goes, um, safety features, right? Um, I think that's something to examine. And also what weather conditions do you plan on encountering? This would mostly deal with drivetrain, right? I think you can easily narrow down um, drivetrain options depending on, you know, if you absolutely need four wheel. Um, but these are all, again, uh, things to consider uh, as far as your size and type of van. Next category would be examining your essential features versus your luxuries. What are your must have features, right? That's the important one. Um, Almost all the time when we talk to someone, it's kind of throwing everything at the wall and saying, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. But when they really examine their camper van use, uh, they may realize that they're paying for something they, they'll never use or need. Um, then alongside that though, I think it's important to understand your wants, right? I think um, wants are good because you might have the budget for it. Uh, it might work out beautifully with your builder uh, but it's also something that you could do without. So I think coming up with uh, your must-haves and your wants is a good exercise for crafting your vision. <laughs> this picture is uh, a foosball build, foosball table build we did for a client, um, and this was a must-have for him. So <laughs> just uh, an example of everybody's must-haves are probably different or maybe different, and what might seem like a want or a luxury um, may not be the case for everybody. Last category uh, for this exercise would be your budget considerations. What can I afford? I think that's always probably the biggest question, uh, but also what's worth examining is, uh, do you need help maintaining the vehicle and its recurring costs? Because just because you can afford something right off the bat, uh, I think you need to examine uh, what it costs to run, uh, maintain uh, a camper van. Uh, and so it's good to, to understand um, what your level of expertise is when it comes to maintaining uh, a camper van or, or, or a camper. So those are just some simple questions I think it's good to uh, run through, uh, examine, uh, and then you can develop a narrative from those, right? I think it starts very top of, you know, top of the funnel, like what is, uh, you know, simple aspects of, of my usage, uh, the size and type of van, you know, my budget considerations, but then we start to get a little bit more uh, in depth on developing a narrative, right? So this is going to be helping you to understand your needs. And I decided to do this exercise with uh, myself 
and breaking down this narrative into those different categories uh, we just ran through. So um, my usage narrative, the size and uh, type of van narrative, uh, you know, the features and the budget. So for instance, you know, large overview, I would mainly be using my camper van um, for weekends because I have a full-time job during the day that requires me to be here in person. Um, you know, that means probably most, most, mostly Arizona trips, uh, but Arizona is very diverse. So it has, um, you know, warm areas, cold areas, depending on the time of year, uh, understanding what type of campsites I like, uh, where I plan on storing the van. So in this case, I would put my van in my driveway, which is 22 feet long. Uh, again, I'm 5'10", so the, the size of myself, um, you know, does allow me to have more options than someone very, very tall. Uh, but traveling with a family of four, uh, you know, changes the narrative a bit there too. Uh, because I am in Arizona, uh, you know, don't have crazy extreme weather conditions like I may have had growing up in Wisconsin. So putting that into a narrative, again, understanding needs is the goal here. Same with features, right? I think most importantly, my must haves would be um, for my family of four, I want safe seating and plenty of sleeping, uh, sleeping space. <laughs> um, Luxuries or wants, right? I think, you know, having some sort of off-grid heat system in this scenario, you know, I like to snowboard. So understanding that that would be nice to have in those few times a year I do go, um, those would be more wants. And we can examine how that might fit in later with my builder. And then for budget, right? I think in my scenario, I'd be, I'm more budget conscious. Um, I have a young family. I have uh, their, <laughs> my kids' future needs to consider. And so, um, Again, something to take into consider consideration for my vision. And then also, even though I do run a camper van manufacturing facility, my end is sales and marketing. Um, Brett's end is on manufacturing. And so I'm fairly incapable of fixing a lot of things on my own. So understanding that is going to be a recurring cost to consider um, when I am on the road. All right. So we've run through this exercise. Uh, we've... Uh, gone through the categories, we started developing a narrative about how this might look for our vision. But then the most important part would be ultimately coming up with some conclusions. And this can be done on your own, um, but you know, potentially you could take you know, your narrative to a van builder um, and the good ones will, will work with you and provide sound reasoning for uh, their conclusions. So through each category, I just kind of put together conclusions that would Makes sense. So since I wouldn't be full time, there's probably certain features that I wouldn't need, like extra storage or maybe indoor shower, or you know having to have reliable internet. Obviously, if I was working on the road, that would be huge, but that wouldn't be um, part of my narrative. Uh, other things, you know, like off grid would make a lot of sense, uh, electrical system, because I like to disperse camp, right? These are conclusions that I'm coming up with through each of these categories um, for size and type, right? I think. My size will allow me to stand comfortably in most cargo vans, um, but I might want to sleep side to side to make up extra room for my passengers. So again, just kind of coming up with conclusions uh, on all of these categories based on your narrative, uh, I think is a systematic way to run through um, your vision, craft your vision, and ultimately come up with your vision, which um, is a culmination of our original questions, our narrative, our conclusions, and a vision. And so overview of my vision would be, I think a Ram ProMaster would make the most sense. The extended version or the regular version, it would fit in my driveway. It would allow me to have more space for my family. Um, I could sleep side to side because of the size of the Ram ProMaster. Uh, and then ultimately I'd be looking for a builder because of my budget considerations to fit in the low to mid range um, that maybe has experience building for a family of four. Uh, someone that prioritizes service, right? If I need help on the road, uh, a warranty would be great. Um, you know, this is all stuff that I would put into my vision because I think understanding your vision is going to move you into the next step, which is taking your vision and understanding the type of builder that can realize it. All right. So everybody with me? Part two is types of builders. And this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, really how I see it is there's three types. The first one would be um, your do-it-yourself support builders. And 
these are really for the type of people that are want to build the van or aspects of their van on their own, right? So maybe you're enlisting someone to help, a friend or family or um, a consultant, right? You're going to be doing a lot of the work, but you're going to have support where you need it. And the benefits of this is uh, most effectively, it's going to um, lower your costs, right? You're going to be doing a lot of the work yourself. That's going to save costs in the end. Uh, but other benefits would be just the personal satisfaction um, of building exactly what you want, right? You can take your time. Um, you know, these are all things that are really nice. Uh, if you uh, have the expertise and you feel strong in, in building a lot of the man on your own, right? Negatives, um, you guys can look at those, but um, I think it's, it's not as easy necessarily as working with a, say, a full, full service build, builder. But, um, you know, for some people, it may make the most sense. Second type of builder, uh, I'm identifying as a specialty builder. Uh, and this would be someone more uh, you would want to enlist for something very unique. Perhaps it's a schoolie conversion or it's a real high tech innovative van no one's ever done before and you want to be the first. Um, and this is going to be probably your smallest group of builders. Um, but the high, you know, the plus is you're going to get a high level of customization. Um, everything could be custom. Uh, and you're going to have anything you want, right? Because you are basically crafting this vision um, to be realized by a specialty builder that perhaps might, might haven't done it before, but is willing to try. Um, but this is uh, going to be your most expensive option. Uh, this is going to be highly specialized work. It might take the longest. Uh, and it's going to be hardest to find someone um, in this category. That leads us to full service builders, which is what I consider um, ourselves at Boho Camper Vans. Um, and this would be, you know, complete range of services uh, from your base vehicle procurement to um, complete customization. And this is what you're pre predominantly going to see in the market today. Uh, most builders will probably consider themselves a full service builder. Uh, there might be some overlap um, with specialty builders and full service builders, but the benefits of working with these types of builders is going to be um, turnkey solutions, right? They can generally procure the van. They can um, have various options for you to choose from. Uh, they probably have a lot of uh, experience, hopefully, and they're going to build it fast. Um, and sometimes that's what people want. I think the negative is could have longer wait times to start. I know at Boho, um, we've always been on a wait. We've always been on a pre-order list. Um, and that's because I think um, it's maybe the most approachable style of builder um, for someone that doesn't have any experience. How do you choose which one? Uh, looking at your vision should make it easy, right? I think if you realize, hey, I have high expertise, um, I have very low budget, um, this is something um, I don't mind participating in doing, should be very easy to, to know that, hey, maybe uh, do it yourself. Support builder would be helpful uh, to enlist and help you with your build. If you have some crazy type of unique custom chassis or, again, school bus or something that you maybe haven't seen before, uh, you know, specialty builder is probably the way to go. But if you're not one of those two groups, uh, you know, full service builder, I think is the most popular and probably what most people are looking for when it comes to camper van conversion. All right. That moves us into the third part, which, um, might be maybe the most important part, um, uh, which is evaluating builders. Again, how do you ensure that you're finding a reputable and trustworthy builder for your project? Let's evaluate. Ultimate goal, right? I jumped ahead. Uh, this is the goal, right? Let's find someone that can bring your vision to life that you trust, you feel confident moving forward with. Uh, and that's the really the purpose of evaluating a builder. Oh, I'm covering her face. There we go. So I put together seven key points to evaluate. Uh, and I'll run through each of those with some questions I think are worth I'm um, considering when you're evaluating builders, but um, it runs through experience at one, reputation, options, quality, service, transparency, and pricing. 
experience. Years in business, um, I, I think can be important, uh, but not necessarily always the most important because there's a lot of new companies out there that are doing great things. Um, but I think it's important to understand that um, with experience comes um, longevity. And one of the worst things I can see is when we have someone come by um, looking to get something fixed in their build and the only reason they're coming to us is because the person that built their van doesn't exist anymore. Um, that's a problem because oftentimes it might not come with an electrical diagram or certain things that make it very difficult to work on. And so I think understanding um, a, a builder's experience uh, as far as their years in business are important to know um, and to evaluate because you want to make sure that they're there for support in the future. Uh, also, also their background, right? I think there's certain expertise and specialties, whether it's the chassis or the material usage. I think understanding their background, um, their skills, uh, very important. Uh, you know, you wouldn't want me wiring up your, your van, um, but you would understand that we have an electrician on site that um, is responsible for that aspect of the build, right? So I think understanding the background um, of who you're working with is really important. Um, just so you know that you're going to be getting, um, you feel confidence in, in what they can do for you. And then the previous projects in their portfolio. I think running through past builds for quality and examples that meet your vision are really important. It's kind of the fun part, looking at examples of, of their portfolio or their build or vans that you like. Um, we always get comments of, hey, I want to work with you guys. I really like the Marjorie build, right? All of our vans have names. Uh, I really like the Marjorie build, um, you know, can you tell me more about that? And so I think that that's a really good tool um, and a way to evaluate is just look at their body of work. Do you like any of it? <laughs> can you imagine yourself in it? Um, that's something that's uh, fun and definitely worthwhile to, to run through. And then two, reputation. Strong online presence uh, I think is very important. Um, you know, you, you're establishing credibility and trust and the presence could be whether it's a well-polished website. I think that's important because the quality that they're putting into their, everything they do um, is going to reflect ultimately on the quality they put into their build. So maybe it's just a website, but um, if it's not done well, what does that say about their business? Um, aside from website, you can look at um, articles written about them. Uh, you know, that's always a good way to, to to know that there's some credibility and, and a presence out there. If major media outlets have covered them, look out for those things. Don't just look on their website. Uh, reviews. Client reviews um, is probably the best way to understand the reputation of a builder. Um, how satisfied are past and current customers? Um, I think it's easy to look at reviews and always try to, you know, look at five star reviews and, and, and read all the great things, but try sorting from worst review first. Read about what happened. Um, you know, does it seem like it's a big concern? Is it something scary? Um, you know, I've seen reviews of um, issues with electrical systems and pictures of uh, a van with, it looked like there was a fire started because of a bad wiring. And so um, understanding what the clients have experienced uh, and also seeing how the company responded to perhaps a negative review, right? Is it um, just making excuses? Is it pointing blame? Hopefully not, but I've seen it, uh, right? Understanding um, maybe there was a bad review, but understanding was there something to remedy the issue? Uh, and so digging into reviews is important. Social media is a good way to uh, check out a reputation as well. Um, it's a really good way to see what they represent as a company. Uh, we've taken our uh, social media and become a little bit more fun with it. Uh, obviously, we still have like showcase of our work, but I think we're uh, positioning ourselves as uh, a lifestyle, and that's ultimately what I th you know this is. We always tell everyone that um, buys a van from us that they're part of the family, uh, and so you know social media is just a way to reflect um, what they represent. Uh, and you can also check out, you know, comments and again, how they respond, much like in reviews, it's important to see how they're responding to something negative. It's always good to see how they respond to that. Number three would be, 
uh, for evaluating builders would be just looking at the options, right? What van types uh, do they build on? Go back to your vision, right? If you realize that you're uh, seven feet tall, you need a super high roof uh, Mercedes and a super long extended chassis, then um, you are gonna want to make sure you are evaluating builders that work on that particular model van, right? Um, most builders, I think, um, you know, including us, work on most every chassis. Uh, they might have a preferred chassis, but I think it's good to um, ensure that they have examples of the exact type of van you want to build, as well as the layout. Um, reputable builders should have multiple layouts to choose from and plenty of examples to share. Not everybody wants the same layout, uh, I think it's important to uh, offer and for builders to offer multiple options and it just helps them become more reputable. And then features, right? What comes standard? Um, what's available to add on? Perhaps they um, have all your wants and maybe there's some luxuries that uh, you know you can add later. Um, are those luxury features or add-on features, are they transparent? I think understanding exactly the costs of um, what it might cost you now versus what it might cost you later if you were to add things. Um, those are all good as far as features go. Quality. Number four is quality for evaluating van builders. Uh, and it starts with the construction materials, right? I would ask a lot of questions. Um, builders should be experts on every material they use. We use a lot of wood uh, and so we I always get questions about, well, why do you use wood? Isn't it heavy? Isn't it this? Isn't it that? Well, we like to jump in and say, well, what's great about wood is it's, first of all, all natural. People really like that. You're not using a lot of plastic. Um, but, you know, cedar in particular, which is behind me and very common in our builds, um, great insulator, great for taking temperature changes, great bug deterrent, looks beautiful, smells beautiful. Um, I think understanding the materials as a builder is paramount and as a potential client, you should be um, questioning and asking them why they use certain materials. For components, uh, same way, right? You wanna be aware of cheap components, especially electrical. I think we, we've all been inside rigs that uh, you can just tell there was something cheap used. Um, I'm looking at you major RV manufacturers, right? Uh, staples, particle board, the sun comes out, it heats up the inside, you know, laminate starts to peel, uh, things rattle, all that stuff is, um, is not good. And especially when it comes to electrical, right, that is a potential danger. Uh, you want to make sure that they're using quality electrical components. Um, we originally were using a cheaper, very common, I'm not going to say the brands, um, electrical company and electrical component um, supplier uh, and realized that the quality just wasn't great. And even worse was the service. If we need to get something warranted or fixed, uh, we realized that it just was impossible to get answers from. Um, and so just because of every van builder is using maybe the same components or you, you often see the same brand of components in a lot of van builders, um, I would still just, you know, make sure you understand what you're getting uh, for instance, we use now uh, Victron components, the, um, you can see in this picture, because we took the idea of we want the best electrical system because selfishly it's going to mean less electrical support, right? It's going to free up time for us to focus on building and not have to worry about troubleshooting electrical problems, and ultimately it's just a safer product. So components are really important, quality of the components are important, and then quality of the aesthetic, right? I think when you're evaluating um, how does the interior make you feel? Uh, does it look like corners are cut? I think it's easy and, you know, it's easy to, to get a feel for how a van might look, but it's hard to understand if corners are cut unless you are in person uh, evaluating. And so that'll lead me into two slides from now, we'll talk about um, in-person stuff. <laughs> so number five, uh, service, right? Evaluating a van builder, uh, communication is very important. Uh, responsiveness from the initial inquiry is imperative, right? If they're not responding right away, um, what's that, you know, when they don't have your business and they could get it, how are they gonna respond once they have it um, on a potential support call? 
I think you want to feel like you have a good line of communication with your builder and you want to be heard. You want to be, um, you know, understood. And a lot of times we'll get people asking what they think is a stupid question, but it, it's not, right? Um, not everybody understands all of this stuff and being able to communicate effectively, <laughs> which I'm trying to do on this presentation, um, is, is great and important. And it's just setting yourself up for a, this relationship, which may last well beyond the build. Collaboration. Uh, so is the company open to customer input? They should be, right? Some of the best ideas we've gotten have been from a client saying, hey, what if we did it like that? Or what if we um, added this feature? Or, wh or what if we move this over here? Um, it's been really great because those are the people on the road using your product and they're ultimately going to have great ideas, right? You can get tunnel vision, um, you know, working on similar layouts or similar builds and it's easy just to get stuck in your ways. So fan builder, um, I think being open to collaboration is important. Um, and it's something I would, I would ask about. Lastly for service is your ongoing support understanding what the expectation um, is after the project is done. Is there a user guide? Um, you know, who do you call if you need help? Uh, you know, all of those types of things are, are important because you'll, you're, no one's ever built a perfect van. There's always going to be something to um, follow up on. Uh, and a good builder, a trustworthy builder will be happy to provide that ongoing support. All right, six, transparency. If you can see the van in person or a model of the van in person from the builder you may want to go with, do it. Even if it, even if it means it's going to cost you um, money to travel there, I think it's very important to understand how a van actually feels when you're inside it, when you're sitting in it, when you're touching the, the finishes. Um, ask for a shop tour if you can. I think some of the feedback we've got, which is just mind blowing is, um, we get people saying, Oh, it looks even better in person, which means one of two things. It means we need to up our photography game or, um, or it's just the, the aesthetic of the interiors we build just can't be, um, translated digitally. Right. I think, um, a lot of people are tactile, right. They're getting into van life for a reason. Um, and I think that it's a special kind of person that, most often would want to and benefit from touching, feeling, sitting uh, in a potential build. Uh, test drives, I heard a story one time about a client that came over and they said that they were wanting to buy an RV. It was like a $180,000 RV from a dealer and the RV um, manager wouldn't let them get behind the wheel and, and drive it. Um, that's just crazy to me and maybe that's, maybe that's commonplace in big RV dealerships, but uh, one of the benefits that we have, um, and you know, smaller builders have, uh, bespoke builders have is the ability to, Hey, take this van for a whirl. Uh, we have a rental fleet, which I always recommend. Um, if the builder does provide that option, go rent the van because, uh, maybe you've are, you're already sold on, on this is who I want to work with, but maybe you'll get an idea. Maybe you want, um, a different feature you didn't think you wanted, or, uh, there's something that, uh, you know, influences how your build's ultimately going to turn out and taking it out camping is the best way to do it. And then your references, right? Contacting you to past clients. We see that a lot, uh, so much so that we actually have a piece on our website called the Boho Locals and I'll, I'll shoot the website over at the end of the presentation, but it's a tool that allows uh, potential customers to connect with um, clients in their area. And so we have clients all over the country that have signed up for the program. And so they can connect with a client, meet up with a tour. Uh, you know, for instance, we had someone out in um, Boston area and they just weren't able to fly out to Arizona. Uh, they said, hey, there's something in my area I can go look at. And so being able to connect potential customers to past clients, uh, I think is really important. And again, it all falls down into this idea of transparency. And the last category is pricing. Uh, obviously this is a big part of evaluating, excuse me, uh, builders. P 
pricing should be transparent. It should be easy to find on company's website. I've seen way too many uh, builders have very, very vague pricing. Um, I think that that's doing them a disservice. Uh, I think showing your pricing and standing behind it is important. Maybe you're the most expensive, but here's why, right? Um, you know, in, in our scenario, we're considered probably mid to low range as far as our pricing goes. Uh, but we have all that publicly on our site. Uh, I think it's really good for evaluating builders is make sure that they have pricing that's transparent. Financing, uh, financing is starting to take get more legs, um, and you know at least for us too, we're able to provide more financing options. But I think it's good to um, understand what financing, what a good financing deal may look like. You know, I've seen. 20 year financing deals coming out right now for, you know, 11, 12%. And I wouldn't feel comfortable offering that to, to anyone. That sounds like a, a crazy investment to get into. It's one thing to get into a, a camper van, but um, if you, if you're needing to finance um, on terms like, like that, perhaps it's not the best time to, to do this in your life. Um, last thing we would want to do is steer someone towards a bad deal. Um, cause that's just going to reflect poorly on, on us as builders and as a company. Um, so yeah, they should be willing, builders should be willing to explain those options, um, provide resources and then warranties. Uh, they should offer one. Uh, we offer one we have a one year warranty and then we have, um, uh, multi-year warranties on various components. Uh, warranties are important. Again, not every van is perfect. Uh, sometimes things shift and move down the road. And so it's important to understand what the warranty is, and that should all be part of the conversation uh, of evaluating you know, your van builder, potential van builder. All right, so just a final recap. I know um, we're just over 35 minutes, um, so I'm a little bit under, and hopefully that's appreciated. But um, discovering the right builder for your camper van is going to start with Understanding your needs by crafting your vision. Selecting a builder type that then caters to your vision. And then evaluating builders to ensure you're choosing a trustworthy builder who will bring your vision to life. I hope this was useful. Um, if you have any questions at all, you're welcome to reach out on our website. I'm sure uh, Project Van Life can get you in touch with me directly. Uh, very, very thankful to participate and hope you learned something. Thank you.